the three plans. In the movies, people go on top secret missions, always have lots of fun gadgets and maps and ropes, and sometimes even wear a cool hat. When you're nine and over three quarters, though, and have to go to school every day, rescue missions are a lot harder, especially when you don't know where the people you want to rescue are, and you have to hide everything you're doing from the person you're going on the mission for. But even though we didn't have any gadgets or ropes or hats, we spent every break time and lunch time and home time trying to think up new ideas that might help Amit find his family quickly. By Thursday morning, Tom and Josie and Michael had each come up with a plan, but I hadn't been able to think of anything. Don't worry, said Josie, you can help us to see if our plan will work. I tried to smile, but it didn't make me feel any better. On the way to school, we went through all the plans. Tom went first. He said we should write to the Prime Minister to tell her to keep the gates open until Amit's found his family. He had gotten the address off the Prime Minister's house from his dad and written out the letter. This is what it looked like. Dear Prime Minister, we heard from some people on the bus that the government was going to lock the gates so that no more refugees could come in. But our friend Amit is a refugee boy. You might have heard about him because he's famous for beating up Brendan the bully and he doesn't know where his mum and dad are and needs to find them. Please, Prime Minister, can you please keep the gates open so that he can, he can find them and so that he can be happy again? Thank you. I thought it was a good idea and so did Josie, but Michael said it wouldn't work because the Prime Minister was in charge of a government and he'd probably been the one who told the security guards to lock the gates and send them her special keys. So we couldn't ask her for help, any help at all. Then Josie talked about her plan, which was called the Special Appeal. She said we should ring a newspaper and tell them all about it because her mum and dad were always complaining about how many special appeals there were for charities in their newspapers. I once, and once the appeal went out, Amit's mum and dad would see it and get in touch. Josie had written a special appeal out and it made it as short as possible so the newspapers could print it quickly. This is what it looked like. Special appeal with a picture of Amit. Please everyone, a boy called Amit who is in Nelson School ran away from Syria because of bombs and lost his mum and dad's. If you see a man and a woman who looks like this is their son of your, of your Amit's mum and dad, please ring Mrs Khan on the telephone number at our school which is below. We need to find Amit's family before the gates are locked, which is why this appeal is so special. We all liked the special appeal plan, but then Tom said that even if we did put the appeal in a newspaper, the newspaper would only be sold in England and Amit's mum and dad and anyone who might have seen them would never see it. He knew because when he lived in America, he only saw American newspapers and that's what it must be like in, up in all the other countries of the world too. Then Michael told us about his plan. We should write to the High Court to, ju to the judge sitting in the highest chair in the land and ask them to order all the security guards to open the gates when they see mom, Amit's mum and dad. He whispered, it's called an appeal too. I've heard my mum talking about them because her law firm are always doing them for people. I'd ask her to help Amit, but she's always complaining about how much work she has to do and she charges hundreds of pounds per hour. But we can't afford that, cried Tom. I know, replied Michael, rolling his eyes, which is why I'm saying we should do the appeal ourselves. Isn't an appeal like my newspaper one, asked Josie. Sort of, except it's for a judge. All we need to do is find out who the highest judge in the land is and write to them, replied Michael. We could even send them your appeal, he said, giving Josie a nudge on the arm. We'd only need to change it, it a little bit. Mum's always saying that judges have nothing better to do than to read appeals all the time. We were excited about this idea the most, and as no one could think of anything that might be wrong with it, we decided to go to the school library at home time to find out the name of the highest judge in the land. So when the, bell, when the last bell rang, we told Amit we had to get home quickly so he wouldn't follow us and headed straight there. Our school library isn't as big as the one Mum works in, but it has larger windows and lots more sunlight, which means you can see all the books better. Miss Finicky is our librarian. She always wears bright coloured clothes and bright red lipstick, and you don't ever have to look at, for her because she's always standing behind the library counter. I like Mrs Finicky because she's always getting excited when you ask her for anything. She tells people off for not looking after their books properly, just like Mum. She has a large sign on the counter that says, Books are like people that pass their covers and they'll take you on a great adventure. I like it because it's fun to imagine books, people as books, and guess about what kind of adventure they might take you on. When we got to the library counter, we all looked up at Mrs Finicky. She was wearing a sky blue top and a sky blue, sky blue skirt. And Mrs Finicky smiled and looked down at all of us and said, Hello, and how can I help you today? Tom and Josie looked at over at Michael and waited. So he asked, 
Miss, do you know where we can find out who the highest judge in the land is? We need to find out um, for uh, homework. Really, said Mrs Finicky, frowning. We all nodded. Mrs Finicky scratched her chin. I think we'll have to look online for that, she said, as she started typing it into her computer. We nodded and waited excitedly for an answer as Mrs Finicky narrowed her eyes and looked at the screen. After a few seconds, she said, here we go. Right. Was it the name of a Lord Chief Justice you were after or the High Court Judge for the Family Division? We all looked at each other and then Michael said, Family Division, please. Mrs Finicky wrote the name out on a piece of paper. When she gave it to Michael, we all looked over his shoulder and it read, HC Family Division, Dame Leslie Williamson. Anything else? asked Mrs Finicky. Josie said, does it have her address there, Miss? Mrs Finicky frowned again. Her address? She asked, you have to send her a letter as part of your homework. We all nodded. So that it gets to her by tomorrow, I added. It's the High Court of Justice you'll be needing to write to, said Mrs Finicky, narrowing her eyes at the computer screen again as she copied it down. But even if you post it today and it gets to her office tomorrow or on Saturday, remember that the courts are closed over the weekend and it won't be the judge who gets your envelope. She'll have her secretary open her mail for her. She handed the slip of paper with the address to Josie. Anything else? She looked at our downcast faces. I'm sure she'll read your letter eventually, she added. It might just take a while. We left and gathered in the hallway outside. What are we going to do now, asked Josie. Her face was all pink, which is what happens when she's really upset. Even if we send the judge that appeal right away, the gates will be shut before she even gets it. It's already Thursday, and after this weekend is over, we'll only have five more days. We all looked at Michael, who shrugged and looked at the floor. We've got to think of another idea, said Tom urgently. We all nodded, but I felt sick inside. I was scared that Amit's family wouldn't be found in time. We were all silent on the bus ride home that afternoon. Everyone was thinking hard, but I, couldn't, I could tell from all our faces that none of us had come up with anything. I felt the worst, because at least everyone else had thought of something. I hadn't come up with a single plan. Now, I know it was because my brain just wasn't ready to think of anything. It wouldn't be ready until the weekend. But when it was, it came up with a plan so fantastic that nobody could say no to it. Not even a judge sitting in the highest chair in the land.